side has just filed a review petition in the Supreme Court, but it has become completely controversial because as it turns out, senior advocate who has been representing them till now, Rajiv Dhawan, he has said that he's been sacked by them. And that news coming in, Rajiv Dhawan, of course, it's a pleasure speaking with you also because he hasn't till now spoken about the judgment that came out earlier this year. Thanks so much for speaking with us. I want to start, first of all, by the controversy has that has just emerged. You spent so much time, this was one of those longest running cases, um, working on the Ayodhya case. But when it came to the review petition, how come you felt that you were removed? I didn't feel I was removed. I was removed. I had worked with Mr. Magbul in his chamber for 10 days. I created the structure. That structure was shared with the other Muslim parties. The review petition needed to be tweaked. They wanted to file on Monday. I had an appointment with them that very Monday so that it could be filed on Monday. At 10.14 a.m., I was with the dentist for a routine appointment. Mr. Magbul told me that I was no longer involved with the case. I asked him, this is a sacking. He said, there is nothing I can do about it. There appears to be some differences, sir. We spoke with Mr. Shamshad and he was saying that for the All India Muslim Law Board, you still are going to be their lawyer as well. So would you agree that because there are so many groups involved, there are so many sentiments involved, there seems to have, seems to, there seem to be differences that have creeped up? This controversy arose before. It was also created by Mr. Makbul. I sided with the Jamiat because they came to me first. They were the lead matter. So I said I would appear for them. There is no misunderstanding as far as the sacking is concerned because the moment I got back home, I wrote a letter to Mr. Makbul telling him the cause was greater than all of us. I also told him and reminded him that we had already worked on the review and I would have completed it. But there was no reply for him. If some of the other parties now approach you and say, would you work on the case, would you? There is obviously a rift between them. I don't want to expand that rift. When one party says no to you, and they're on the same side, and the other party says yes, what will it appear like to the Muslim community which is consolidated on the issue? that Mr. Dhawan has in fact expanded the rift by taking a brief from one side while he was rejected on the other. This is a matter that the community has to resolve. You know, you talk about the community. So it was interesting in the days leading up to this petition, review petition being filed yesterday, we saw a whole array of voices. Many people felt that perhaps, you know, it was better to accept this judgment since you were for a review petition. What would your argument be? Why was this required? Because we heard so many editorials being written by various uh, members of the community, which said, you know, you know, let's just have closure to it. What is your argument against it? What is your argument for a review? I will continue not to comment on the judgment until all these questions of review and hearings are resolved. But the one thing that I will say is there cannot be peace without justice. You order a peace and then you say, this is the end result, please be peaceful. A masjid that has been standing for 400 years has been destroyed and you say, let us have peace. What is the role of the Supreme Court when it invokes complete justice? There was no complete justice in this case. But my reason for filing the review or asking to file the review when my advice was taken was simply this. One lot of people have said, don't file. The other lot of people have said, file. There's great controversy. The parties should place on record what their objection to the judgment is. Mm. Not through the media, not through any news channel, but they must state what they think was wrong and put it as a matter of record. Whether the review succeeds or not is irrelevant. What is relevant is when people ask, what is your objection to the judgment of Muslim parties? They should say it is all there in the review. I wanted to also ask you, sir, because this case means a lot to everyone. I think to 
most citizens of this country because uh, it emerged from December 6, 1992, which had repercussions for many. I want to ask you, what has been, and I'm not asking you to comment with judgment, what has been personally for you, how has it impacted you? We saw some many dramatic, you know, moments in court as well. But for you, how has this case played out for you? It was a case. I was privileged to be associated with it. There are many lawyers in the Supreme Court who might have done a much better job. It was a privilege because I believe that minority rights should not be taken away and stamped on. And I believe there is something called secularism in this country. So it was a cause lawyering case for me. I've done many cause lawyering cases, even for the Hindu side. I appeared in the Kashi case. I appeared in Kamakya. So this question of cause lawyering is separate. In various aspects of Narmada, I have appeared for Medha and others. Now you say, was this a great opportunity? It is always an opportunity to do a cause lawyering case without fees. Do, do you think that you've been, do, do people, have they come and approached you and said, you know, uh, because you know, there's an atmosphere, there's a vitiated atmosphere, many would say, have you faced that? Do, are you being identified now with the Muslim side because of this? Throughout this, somebody left a tin with excreta outside my house. The police came trying to give me some kind of protection. I said, I don't want it. As far as the abuse is concerned, they have abused me in court, outside court. I don't care. When I used to come for the lunch break, they used to say, Jai Sri Ram, Who used to? the Hindu lawyers. I said to them, obviously, this is not a blessing. You're trying to provoke me. Please don't do it. My clerk was attacked outside the court. I have now received so many death threats that it is unbelievable. Abuse of a kind that I have never, never heard of been victim of before. And I know the choicest of UP abu abuses because I was brought up there. <laughs> but this was tremendous. Hindus who have briefed me want their cases back. And I say, fine, this is your choice. So how the hell do I care? So it has, I mean, and, and you're a Hindu, Rajiv Thavan. Are you a practicing Hindu? No, I told the court and I will tell you. We are Arya Samajis. We don't believe in idols. Okay? I don't practice Hinduism to that extent. I don't pray to idols. Okay? I have been to many temples. I have brought up in one sense in boarding school as a Christian. I'm very familiar with it. And therefore, I am a Hindu. I have never said otherwise. My friends say that I'm a uh, Arya Samaji Marxist. Even that is acceptable. Well, so we're going to wait for you to, and for the review petitions and everything to be over, for you to comment on the judgment, because I think there is so much left to be said on that as well. And as you said, you've said, in fact, in so many words that you don't believe there's been justice. I wanted to ask you about one of those headline grabbing moments when you tore up a map in the courtroom. Any, any kind of regrets about some of those dramatic moments? It's not a question of regret. I was almost ordered to do so. It happened in this way. Right at the end, the other side wanted to present evidence which was not admissible. At that stage, it should never have been raised. So I told the Chief Justice, may I take this piece of paper and put it on the table? He said, you may tear it. And I said, very well. So I tore it. Later during lunch, one of the journalists of Times of India told me that that didn't happen. So I went back to the Chief Justice in the afternoon and I said, this has gone viral. And uh, is it correct that you told me I could tear it? He said, I told you and you tore it. May my comment also go viral. <laughs> well, that's uh, fascinating. Thank you so much, Rajiv Dhawan, for speaking to Hindustan Times. Thank you. Bye-bye.